personal glory for himself there. See, that, that chance really came out of... And he really ought to encourage the Moroccans to go forward because it, it was a kick out the goalkeeper's hands. He thumped it deep in the Cameroon half. The centre-half looked not too good in the air to that type of ball. He misheaded it. The Moroccans got on the knockdown and got a shot out of it. So it really ought to encourage them to go forward. Gunnar Bieck, man who was sent off against Argentina in the opening game of the World Cup, just turning it back to his goalkeeper, Joseph Antoine Bell, the Saint Etienne player. There's one here for Oman Bieck to chase. 13 is Jean Claude Pagal, another man who plays his club football in France. And as he should get there, indeed he does. And Baduzaki. Joseph Antoine Bell, 37 year old goalkeeper. You see, Gay, the idea of this type of football is to try and suck the other team forward. Azuzi. Really wasn't the most intelligent of crosses to the back post. There wasn't a. I, I think that uh, the Moroccans have settled down the best. I mean, uh, the, the Cameroons at the moment look a little bit disjointed. They're not threading their passes together like the Moroccans. The Moroccans are, are, are very clever on their, their short little passing, their little kind of ten-yard play, little one-twos off each other. Uh, the quality of that cross was poor. Balut for the uh, record playing in his first African Nations Cup. Now finds himself pressed into the Moroccan defence. 13 here is Jean-Claude Pagal. was a foul there, wasn't there? Oh, yeah, he didn't play the ball at all. He, as he went across him, he, uh, his left leg came out. Well, they have some defending to do here. This is Kunde, he brings it clear. Pagal. Pagal again. Because now they've got a bit of quality on the free kicks. Or, obviously, it'll create an opening. Ragib, the uh, player... Must found his way through to Joseph Antoine Bell. Ragui playing it front for Morocco. Makinaki trying to win the ball, he has it now. Stern challenge though. When the Moroccans go forward, that to make running. I mean, there on that last attack when they created an opening, they were prepared. Cameroon proving as rugged as they were 18 months ago when they competed in the 1990 World Cup finals in Italy. Cameroon's performance in reaching the World Cup quarterfinals, of course, helped win African football a third place in the World Cup finals from 1994 onwards. Got a chance of getting in. That's a useful flick on. Those of you who remember 
the stars of Cameroon in Italian 90. You'll be pleased to know that Roger Miller and Thomas Como, the uh, goalkeeper, are here in Senegal as spectators, though, and no doubt they'll be delighted with their team's performance. 80s Mabu. Confirmation of the score. Nearly half an hour gone of this game. Newspapers were suggesting a clash of styles today between Morocco and Cameroon. Now, where was that foul? The answer, I suspect, is outside the penalty area. Koundé certainly claiming this challenge on Cayuch was outside the box. And the referee, Lim Gaichong from Mauritius, Mauritania, should I say, certainly agrees with him. Yeah, well, it, uh, the contact was definitely outside the box. Although Kouchi knocked the ball forward into the box, and obviously his momentum would take him into the box, but the contact was definitely about a foot or so outside the box, and that's what the referee has to go on. So he'll strike this free kick. Cameroon have already shown in their number eight Mabu. They have a player who can terrorise goalkeepers from this sort of position. I wonder if Joseph Antoine Bell is quivering on his goal line. Well, it's Morocco had three men over the ball. He's on the edge of the box, it's a great position for a free kick. Cameroon 1, Morocco 0. Half an hour gone of this opening match in the African Nations Cup from Dakar. You see, the Moroccans are putting players on the end of the wall to, to affect the, the keeper's view. Well, the wall did its job. Very disappointing free kick in the end. I mean, he never got it over. I suppose he was supposed to be a left foot bender over the top of the wall, dragging towards the post. He never got it up, did he? I mean, he contacted the wall halfway up the wall. Not the sort of thing you'd be too appreciative of at Highfield Road, right, Donald. No, we'd expect a little bit more quality than that. And I suspect that too, two particularly poor dead ball situations, both of which Morocco have squandered. And being a goal behind, it's hardly what you'd expect from them. Well, he looks as though he, the, the 14 looks as though he can bend that ball from that. Uh, yeah, obviously, he's a left back, and he's come all the way across to the right wing to take the corner, so they fancy him. Uh, perhaps when he gets his range, you know, if he gets a chance again, sometimes corner, the people who take corners they need to take a couple before they feel the, the weight of the ball, the weight of the kick, so they can get it in the right position. Virtued one of them so far. They lead by a goal to nil. Six is Kunde. Very experienced Kunde. He was a stalwart in Italy. He was always in the thick of things at the back and he was solid. All the time, played a, played a good job, a centre of defence. I wonder if you remember he was a man who scored the penalty against England yes. in that uh, quarter-final in Naples to make it 1-1. Bayoub on the uh, back post, they haven't picked him up. Oh, just for a moment there. Well, that Cameroon was... were left short-handed in the uh, left-back berth. Well, that was definitely, literally, a hair's breadth about... about for the Moroccans to get in because they've got two players queuing up on that back post. Luckily, the left back just got a, just got the tip of his head to it and flicked it on. He gets down there, coach. He keeps getting down in and behind this left back. He picks up the ball. He has to, obviously, he's fairly tied to the touchline. He's pulled people out the middle and all he needs is quick support. Because more times than not, he, he either gets bundled over or there's two or three Cameroon defenders around him and get it off him. Budavala this time fouled by Jean-Claude Pagel. I think they're quite happy to let Cayuch wander down those blind alleys. Yeah, I suppose so. Huh? Uh, it could be they're saying, well, he, you know, he's, he's not harmful out there, he's not, he's not going to hurt us out there. It would do if, if he got quick support to him and he turned around and laid him back and the next ball went in the box. Then it would be dangerous. Budabala. Even for 
37-year-old goalkeeper, that wasn't a difficult shot. Joseph Antoine Bell to stop. But they got that one on target, the last one hit the wall. Kevin, we're playing stoppage time at the end of the first half. Cameroon lead Morocco by goal to nil, and Makineki to take the corner. Not a particularly good corner. Azuzi, this time getting out of his goalkeeper's way, but at least finding him with a pass. Cameroon, remember, bidding for he their third trouble. African Nations Cup success. He looks in trouble. Uh, he looks as though he's having a job. Well, they have Khalid Azmi, probably their second choice. Goalkeeper standing by. He would wear the number 16 jersey. I suspect it would be Asmi to come on, the Casablanca, Casablanca player. It looks as though it's just at the top of the hip bone. You know, and it would be sore there, I've got to say that, and it would restrict his movement. They're getting the spray in there, like they're trying to. Uh, uh, freeze it a little bit. It's one of those injuries, you know, Don, that he can run off as an outfield player. Yeah. But as a goalkeeper, being restricted to the amount of time you're involved in a game, it's a little bit more difficult. Yes, it is. I mean, if he was an outfield player, you'd stick him outside left, out of the way. You'd tell him there's, you know, just a few minutes before half time. And you'd get on with it. It would be interesting to see what they do. They've got problems here, Don, because that's the second player they will have lost in the first half. Yeah. They've already lost Fedal with a shoulder injury, and now it looks like they're going to lose their goalkeeper and captain, Zaki. And I suspect this is Khalid Azmi. Mm. Indeed it is. And now Morocco have used both their substitutes in the opening... 45 minutes. We've played uh, nearly 48 minutes in this first half. And Zaki has played his last football of this opening game. Well, on comes the substitute goalkeeper. You can bet he's been waiting his chance. And he's very much been telling the coach, look, I want a chance, I want to show what I can do. This is it. He'd be lucky if he gets a feel of the ball before half-time, Don. Yeah. Sort of stay out at half time. Tries to win the corner. Now, what, this a could good be time interesting. Get, what a good time to get an equaliser just before half time. It really would be against the run of play should Morocco manage to do so. But Cayuch, who's been their danger man, waiting in the six yard area. by Kanye be at good distance with that flick and some intricate football now good ripple of passes here by Cameroon the Don that you once had Stephen Tatau the Cameroon defender on trial at Queen's yeah. Park Rangers and he's captain of the Cameroons as well and uh, he's a lovely lad uh, this is a fine run in boot involving uh, Azuzi here. An opening for Cayuch. Just the wrong side of the uprights. And he knows he should have done better. 